Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hey, there's all warriors. Any more warriors for Jesus out there? Come on, come on. Oh, we have had an exciting day in church, and now we're here with you in this podcast, and I'm telling you, Holy Ghost is bringing nothing but fire. Come on. Come on, come on, who's with me out there? Sold out for Jesus, amen? That's where he wants us to be, and that is how we will get through these last days of human history. Come on, who's excited? Hallelujah! A shout out to all of you that are following on YouTube and Facebook. We thank God for each and every one of you. We love each and every one of you. We are here for each and every one of you. Amen. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for perhaps personal prayer, or you just want to ch- chat it out or get something off your chest, it's okay. I'm available. Come over to Facebook. Search Rev Eddie. Wiggins. Now, on Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word. No space, no dash, no dots, no periods, just Rev Eddie Wiggins. Message me. That way we can exchange numbers. We'll talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while (laughs) in our hearts that our almighty, (laughs) all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing, Miracle working, can do anything God is going to work it out. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Shout out to our favorite island in the whole wide world. Amen. Oh, and these kids are ready to get out of here. They checked their phones and found out it's going to be a week of raining around this camp. And they heard that that beautiful island of Mindanao, over there in the Philippines, yes, yeah, smoking hot over there. They ready to get out and play. We can't get, wait to get back among you, all of our friends and loved ones over there from Dipalog City to Palanco, from Palanco to Dipaton City, from Dipaton City to Barangay Districts 1, 2, and 3. We thank God for each and every one of all of you, and we thank God for you that you're following this podcast on a broadcast coming out of Polanco, amen, by our favorite DJs in the whole wide world, DJ Joe Ryan and DJ Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love, and it's time for the healing hour on the mighty Kiss FM, Polanco 90.1 on your FM radio dial. And we thank you, Jesus, for keeping them safe, keeping your mighty hand upon them, working in them and through them, getting your word out into the ears, hearts, minds, souls, and spirits of all those that you love on that island. Thank you, Jesus. And let's continue to pray for Pastor Nelia and that powerful ministry that the Lord has her and her co-pastor, Mary Jane Pilare, doing from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains, looking for the lost that they too may be found. Let's keep Charlotte and Dale down in beautiful downtown Australia lifted up in our prayers and their ministry, along with Samanga and her ministry in Zambia, Africa. Minister Deborah Atwell, just on fire for the Lord down on that hot, smoking island of Trinidad, Tobago. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Mugoda Stanley and his ministry over in Uganda, Africa, as well as our Texas crew. Amen. We got Nick and Patricia just on fire for the Lord and that nine prison a week, six days a week, hitting nine prisons in a week. Throughout Texas, I mean, there's some long roads over there in Texas, and they don't mind. They don't mind, and they don't get paid for this, y'all. Amen? 
that 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 gas they have to bear that burden but their hearts are just so full of love for god's people and they're ministering to all those men and women's prisons that the lord has made available and their friends pastor mike and pastor joel at that beautiful victory outreach over there in beautiful downtown Fort Worth, Texas. We just thank God for them as well. And Pastor Joel and his wife's six-day-a-week prison ministry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What's up, Sam Knight? (laughs) We thank God for you. Amen. And let's continue to pray for my teachers, coaches, and uh, spiritual mentors, coach Randy Lowe, his lovely wife, their ministry, all his family, relatives and loved ones, as well as Coach Gekka. Hey, Coach, I see you behind the light. Got your lovely in your arms and y'all just grinning. (laughs) We thank God for Coach Gekka and all he is doing for Christ's kingdom. Amen. And we want to keep him and Dr. K and all their family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And his ministry. Let's keep praying for Anthony and Jamal and their ministries down on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. And my brother in Christ, Rod. Yeah, let's keep Rod lifted up in our prayers, along with my sisters, Karen and Jan, my auntie Annette, my nephew Michael, and my niece Elena, and we're praying for complete healing in my sister Karen's body from head to toe, in every area of her body, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Sarah and Captain Haynes and their powerful ministries lifted up in our prayers, and for Sarah, we are praying complete healing from head to toe. In every area of your body, girl, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Dorothy and her dad and son, Lee, Pastor Jody, and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tech. Oh, we thank God for our Gail and Tech. I should see them in two days. Keep us in prayer. We're heading back up to Solano Prison Level 2. We'll be going to the chapel ministering this word of God once again. Thank you, Jesus. And let's continue to pray for Gail and Texas' grandson, Mateo, totally healed, delivered, and restored in his body, mind, heart, and soul. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep praying for Jay Clark. (laughs) How you doing, Jay? Thank God for you and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you're doing for Jay and his family. Thank you, Lord. And Jay, once again, thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping us safe. Man, we love you. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Cheyenne and her children, family, relatives, situations and circumstances. Miss Helena Gore, we just thank God for you, Miss Helena. And Ladera Turner. (coughs) We thank God for you, Ladera. And we thank you, Jesus, for all you've done, all you're doing, everything you plan on doing in Ladera's life, in each and every one of her family members' lives, especially Her sister and that miracle granddaughter of hers, thank you, Jesus. And let's continue to pray for Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and her daughter. You notice we're praying for kids here. We got to. Times have changed. And there's agendas out there that would harm our children. Amen. And we thank you, Jesus, for placing a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around Ladera and her entire family in all those situations. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Ashley and her daughter. Telling you, lots of kids. Amen. And uh, Ashley's entire family, Lord. We thank you for your mighty hand of protection over Ashley and her daughter. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to reveal yourself in a very powerful and undeniable way to each one of Ashley's family members. Touch their hearts that they too would fall madly in love with you and serve you for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, a shout out and let's keep praying for Lucia and Sasha. 
Ha! <laughs> we thank God for the both of you. You are so precious to the Lord, and we know it. Amen. And we're going to continue to pray for Lucia's sister, Martina, and her brother, John. Let's keep April and her children lifted up in our prayers. Her children are Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie. And her husband, John, or Nana Sandy, healed from head to toe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And her Aunt Sandy for salvation, healing, and deliverance. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And April's prayer is that all her children, all her family members would fall madly in love with Jesus. We touch and agree right now. It is done in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for Jesse. <laughs> Amen. He done made the kids some rice and taquitos and all kind of goodies over there. Amen. And, yep, they're still eating. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for you, Jesse, and we want to continue to pray for Jesse's family, especially his mom and uncle, that they, too, would come into the true knowledge of Jesus Christ and serve him with all their hearts for the rest of their days in Jesus' Precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for Lene, our truth warrior, and her ministry. Amen. We thank God for Lene and all she's doing for Christ's kingdom. Let's pray for her children, her mom Linda, her dad, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her business, and her finances. Lord, bless her, bless her, bless her like never before. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep praying with Ms. Turner. <laughs> Miss Adrena Turner. She was our guest yesterday. Wasn't that lovely? Wow. I just enjoy every time we can get her on her. By the way, if you go underneath yesterday's podcast on Facebook, she, uh, Ms. Turner was so kind to leave the links for all the uh, books that she was talking about yesterday. That way you can get a copy. Amen. And so we thank God for Miss Turner, healed from head to toe in Jesus' precious and mighty name. She was such a blessing this morning in church. We thank God for all that he's doing through her and her ministry. Amen. And we want to uh, continue to thank you, Lord, for the peace and comfort that you place in her heart, this mighty wall of uh, protection you have around her as she pours out from that loving heart everything you've blessed her with on those you've called her to serve. Thank you, Jesus. And let's continue to pray for Adrena's cousin Wanda. Amen. At the loss of her son, all of the family afflicted by this Horrible tragedy, she lost her son uh, to gun violence just before the end of last year. Amen. Keep my boy Brian lifted up in your prayers. we got to pray hard for Brian. Amen. And DM Faith from YouTube. Salvation for their entire family in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. And let's keep my boy John Fowler lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Along with E.S. From YouTube. Amen. God bless you, yes. And Scott Woodall and his faithful Steve. <laughs> Rosie and Tammy, we thank God for you, Scott. And he's going out with Barney today, hiking after church. And hopefully Ray went with him. I got to talk to Scott this morning. It's always a blessing to hear your voice, Scott. It truly blesses me all that the Lord is doing through your life and the ministry he's given you, the work that you do. And we thank you, Jesus, that no more anxiety, depression in that fa entire family. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing for Scott's sister, his wife, Ray and Barty. Capture those hearts, Lord. <laughs> Amen. And all the rest of them that you have. Uh, Scott ministering too, especially his supervisor. Oh, get him, Lord, get him, Lord, get him, Lord. Amen. And let's continue to pray for God's Thunder Twin. Ah, oh, we thank God for our Thunder Twin. Boy, they lit that church up this morning. Woo! I'm telling you, it was fire. 
fire from heaven. Amen. <laughs> so we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies and your complete de deliverance in every area of their lives in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And we're going to join you, God's Thunder Twins. We will continue to pray for Kathy that her hip be healed by the mighty hand of God in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and that your seven-year-old little cutie pie nephew, Jamie, will be healed, delivered, and restored fully in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Pastor Tim lifted up in our prayers. Hallelujah. He just made it home, y'all. He was in church this morning. What a blessing church was. Wow. Boy, we had some church. <laughs> As he used to say in the old days. Amen. And he just got home and he gets a 10-hour break. Amen. So he gets to spend some time with his wife, uh, Heather. Lovely wife, Heather. His beautiful daughters, Jaden and Haley. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And Christina with a K, Christ in her heart, Christ in her name, down in beautiful downtown Arkansas. We just thank God for her, and we want to keep praying for her son and her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every wonderful thing that God has put on that girl's heart to do for his kingdom. Let's pray for our audience down under on the beautiful continent of downtown Australia, starting with Paris and Julie and Margaret and Tyler and Wangui Inn from Melbourne, Australia, Angelica Lewis, Zarlia, Martin and Paris and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. Amen. And Let's not forget Laura from YouTube and her daughter, Micah. Micah, you are coming out of this better than you went in. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, you're coming out with a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power. You are that mighty weapon in God's hands against Satan's kingdom in these last days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Gene from YouTube. Amen. And Christine Starr and Robert Minnick Ikina from Houston, Texas, and Ken and Cindy. Hi. We just thank God for the both of you and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. Kids got their uh, nice little uh, uh, fruit box that you sent. Thank you. They are over there munching, having themselves a good time. Amen. <laughs> Told you. Amen. And we thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing for Ken and Cindy and their marriage and their home, their family, their kids, all their relatives, their jobs, their income. Thank you, Lord. Just bless them like never before in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's continue to pray for Carly from YouTube. Amen. And pick a moon from India, a great job, a wonderful job, a high-paying job, and a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent Christian husband from her tribe in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to lift up Marvin Cage and Helen Geddes and Leah Henderson and her entire family, my girl Charlie, amen, as well as healing and protection. Thank you, Jesus for protecting Kelly and her five-year-old son. No more abuse in Jesus' precious and mighty name and healing in their heart from any abuse they may have all already uh, gone through. Thank you, Jesus. And our beloved Anna from Alabama. Amen. Kids do not want to come down there with you, girl. They saw your weather forecast and they're, they may be stuck in the house with all this rain, but they, they don't want to come down there and freeze right now. So you're on your own, Anna. But we thank God for Anna. We had a good time in church this morning. And we thank God for Terry and all the miracles God is pouring out on you and Terry. Terry in his body, his mind, his heart, his soul, his spirit. Oh, there's a complete work being done. Healing and deliverance and restoration in Jesus' 
precious and mighty name, and we thank God for the hedge of protection and wall of fire that the Lord has around you and Terry and Valerie, your precious daughter, and those precious children of, of Valerie, uh, Odie and Atlas. Thank you, Jesus. No more abuse in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. And we're praying for salvation, healing, and deliverance from your, for your son-in-law like the world has never seen in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for peace and healing in Christ-like minds over Raven, Shiloh, and Harley. Let's pray for Gloria and all her children, her husband and her brother Vincent. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Touch Gloria's husband's kidneys and heart and make them just like new. And Gloria's brother Vincent, in that VA hospital suffering from a massive uh, uh, addiction to Adderall. Oh, Lord, just deliver him from all of that. Amen. And send your people to him to minister to him. We know you got children over there that are in love with you, and he needs a miracle in his mind. That's what Vincent needs, a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power. And, Lord, take the blinders off the steaming family in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Lakeisha and her ministry son and family, my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl, Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia. And, Lord, just have your way in each and every one of their hearts. And, Lord, pour your love out upon them that they can feel it. <laughs> in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for minister, prophetess Laura Solis and her ministry, her prayers for peace and forgiveness throughout her ministry and family. And we're going to continue to pray for her son George, her daughter Adrena, and her cousin Violet. Let's not forget John Garcia from YouTube. Let's keep him lifted up in our prayers. Deliverance from drugs in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Herman from Stockholm, Sweden, Lord, we lift him up before you. We pray that you have guided him to a spirit-filled church of your choice and that through this you will draw him closer and closer to you. Let's keep Ashley and Jet lifted up in our prayers along with Jahan from England. The glands in those eyelids restored that they may tear in water and, and, and lubricate those eyes in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And keep giving her your visions, Lord. Let her know exactly what it is that you want her to do for your kingdom in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Alonzo Holloway and Fred Tiffany, the man that will be saved, and Derek. <laughs> And his entire family, we thank God for you, Derek, especially your mom and brother. Amen. We thank the Lord that you are just on fire for his kingdom. And we're praying, Lord Jesus, that you would light a fire in the hearts of each and every one of his family members, especially his brother and mom, that they too will fall madly in love with you and serve you for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's pray for Marie Eleanor and her husband and son, along with Boyd Lamar, his own place, a nice place, a safe place, a great job, high-paying job and healing in his broken heart. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, pray for Krista and her husband and all her family, relatives, and loved ones over there in Kenya, Africa, especially her brother Benedict, for salvation, healing, and deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and lifestyles not pleasing to the Lord, that he too would fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him wholeheartedly for the rest of his days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. A hedge of protection and a wall of fire around Angelo Highsmith. Let's continue to pray for Al Battle, James Mayer, and Cody, all delivered whole and complete from drugs in Jesus, precious and mighty name, Mario for his salvation, and we're praying against 
the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry, each and every one of your families and homes and workplaces in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's give a shout out and keep praying for Auntie Helen. Hey, Auntie, God bless you. Let's keep Michelle Vanal and all her ministries lifted up in our prayers along with our Ronnie. Oh, we had a good time in church with Ronnie this morning. We thank God for you, Ronnie, and we thank the Lord for bringing you here. What an embrace, and we thank the Lord in advance for all he's going to do in each and every one of your situations, your family, your relatives, your loved ones, and in their lives and situations. Thank you, Lord, for shielding and protecting each one of them and bringing them through in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's continue to pray for Clarissa. Y'all don't know. Mike, what are you kids doing? Everybody come here. You think they came here for you. I got to have a friend. Y'all don't even know this girl. She's over there in Austin, Texas our Clarissa, and we've had some good chats in the last couple of days, and we just want to thank God for all he's revealing to her as he's guiding her (laughs) into a very powerful ministry, a very powerful place, serving him in Jesus' precious and mighty name. We declare that the Spirit of God that you have freely given the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Solano Prison and every prison causes them not to walk in the spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that because of your presence in them, every place that the soles of their feet shall step becomes holy ground and belongs to them. Your presence, Heavenly Father, is causing them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters these prison walls. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for de- demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk. In the example of love that Hosea showed towards Gomer, even in her unfaithfulness to him, we choose to move in an abundance of love, showing respect for all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We follow your example, Heavenly Father, and walk in your way of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continually breaking off every chain off of every heart and setting each and every one of these captives free. Receive the prayers of incense rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on these prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, protection, and the peace of God rule in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Who's ready for a word? Come on! Grab your Bibles. We're turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Ooh, and I'm telling you, this is going to be fire. Amen. As we're headed toward these last days in human history, going in to this tribulation, we got to know this walk, y'all, because we're going to have to walk this walk. When the gloves comes off in the world and chaos and killing and murders and just all types of horrors going around this world in these cities, We got to walk the walk, y'all. Their gloves come off and it gets, ooh, nasty, wicked. I've seen visions of these last days. We're talking nasty, wicked. Oh, you act like it ain't going to be nasty. (laughs) Nasty it's going to be. But we don't get nasty with them. We just get moving. (laughs) Amen. And we walk this walk to the end. Amen. And that's why in this ministry, we've talked about it over and over again. We are the last army, the last church. We're the bride he's coming back for on their clouds. We're going to see his return, y'all. This is beautiful. Amen. That's why we will not bend. We will not break. We will not shy away. Never shy away. Boldly come forth in the name of Jesus. We won't compromise our walk. 
We're not going to compromise this word of God, not one period, not one comma. But we will be what Christ created us to be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, warriors. Let's get into this word. Now, I may have made a mistake yesterday, and I wanted to correct that. There were four letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Two were lost. Why y'all looking at me like that? I don't know where they went. If I knew where they were, they wouldn't be lost. They were lost. Mailman dropped them out of his bag. Maybe he was getting chased by a frog or a dog. I don't know. Ran into some sprinklers. They got soaked in another yard running from the dog. I don't know how they got lost. But there were four letters written. (coughs) Amen. And we have. Amen? Two of them. One is called 1 Corinthians, but it's actually the second of the law of the letters. So it technically would have been 2 Corinthians. Amen? Let me read this. Two of which included in the Bible. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is law. So 1 Corinthians is actually the second letter. Amen? His second letter is to them is our book of First Corinthians. His third letter is law. So our second Corinthians would have been that fourth letter. Are you with me? So we have two of the four. Amen? And let's get into this. I've got a wonderful preface to read as we go into First Corinthians. Now this was written approximately 50 5 AD, near the end of Paul's three-year ministry in Ephesus during his third missionary journey. Now, we just went through the book of Acts, so you remember it was after Ephesus that Paul had to get back down to Jerusalem with this offering in which he's arrested. (laughs) Amen? And taken to Rome in chains two years later. Spent two years in prison in Caesarea waiting for a trial where he has no charge. (laughs) Amen. Boy, are we seeing a whole bunch of that today. Amen. Nothing's changed with the justice system. That's for sure. But uh, this letter uh, was, was approximately written in AD 55. Amen. Now, he's answering. This is something people need to get in their spirits. He's answering letters from the church he planted, which is now infiltrated, has become corrupt by the corrupted society this church sits in. They've been infiltrated, y'all. There's an enemy in the house. (laughs) Kind of reminds us of our churches today, huh? The world is in the church that Paul planted. He's answering questions. Now, as we discovered in Romans, he never told the women they couldn't preach, teach. And he wasn't telling the church in Corinth that women could never preach or teach. It was at this time to handle a certain situation at that church and that church only and we see some of the issues out of Corinth affected the church in Ephesia too see Paul wasn't there he couldn't control things and in his absence the church is going nuts (laughs) you feel me leadership is failing and the world's coming in I wanted to bring another point too because we're going to get to it in this book You remember, okay, that the women were told they had to cover their heads. Do you know this church, there's women in church today wearing a hat, thinking that they're following scripture. It has nothing to do with this culture today. Your covering women is your hair. (laughs) But they were shaving their heads back then. Yeah, bald-headed women. Because the prostitutes 
at the temples in Corinth would have shaved heads so they didn't stand I mean so they would stand out in the crowd so you knew who to proposition to have sex with as you went to temple. Being in that society, some of these prostitutes were getting saved. Some of these uh, uh, women, whether Jew or Gentile, might have had their head shaved for some reason or another. And so as not to get confused with God's daughters and the daughters of the evil ones out there as prostitutes, he said, if you ain't got no hair, then cover your hair. But your hair is your covering. So if you ain't got none, cover your head. That doesn't mean that women have to wear hats in church today. You see how they get things misconstrued. He was answering questions from a particular church at a particular time that had major issues. Let's get into this. Amen? I want to bring this preface. It's really good. On a bed of grass, a chameleon's skin turns green. On the earth, it becomes brown. The animal changes to match the environment. Many creatures blend into nature with God's given camouflage, okay, uh, suits to aid their survival. It's natural to fit in and adapt to the environment, but followers of Christ are new creation, born from above and changed from within with values and lifestyles that confront the world and clash with accepted morals. True believers don't blend in very well. Oh, you lovers of Jesus, you're so strange. <laughs> yes, we are, okay? Aliens on this planet, <laughs> we are. <laughs> and then we can't fit in because we belong to Jesus. Somebody need to shout up in here. Amen? The Christians in Corinth were struggling in their environment, surrounded by corruption in every conceivable sin. They felt the pressure to adapt. Ooh. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> they felt the pressure to adapt. Oh, no, we don't want to mix with them. Let's keep going. They knew they were free in Christ, but what? did this freedom mean? How should they view idols or sexuality? What should they do about marriage, women in the church, and the gifts of the Spirit? These were more than theoretical questions. The church was being undermined by immorality and spiritual immaturity. Babies, diaper wearing folks on a battlefield for souls. And aren't we seeing that today? Amen? Watch this. The believer's faith was being tried in the crucible. You know anything put in the crucible? It's going to be heated up. It's going to be heated up with fire to burn out the dross, to separate the impurities from the precious silver or gold. That's what the crucible was used for. Amen? So it says the believer's faith was being tried in the crucible of immoral Corinth, and some of them were failing the test. There was corruption in the church. <laughs> like that's a news flash, right? <laughs> we can look right here and see all that madness going around all around this country and all around this world. And it can't be, y'all. We got to do it God's way. That's the best way. And we're going to learn that way in God's word. That's why we always say, read your word, read your word, read your word. Know how to act. <laughs> know how to live. Be a walking gospel. Your lifestyle is this gospel. 
That's why we read the Word. We're not trying to impress anybody about how many scriptures we've got memorized. That's not what this is about. we got to live this. It's got to become a lifestyle, you see? A walking gospel is what we want to become. That's why we got to get this Word in us. The power to change is in this Word. The power to heal, the power to save, the power to deliver is in this word. This word is anointed. Come on, y'all. Jesus is the word. Hallelujah. (coughs) Let me finish this preface. The believers faced with, uh, let's see, Paul heard of their struggles and wrote this letter to address their problems, not yours. Not today. Their problems at that particular time in that city. That's where this letter applies. When he's talking about the women, when he's talking about the head coverings, when he's talking about different issues we're going to see here, the spiritual gifts, he was addressing their immaturity, their lack of commitment, the corruption that it entered the church at that time. To say that a woman can't preach, teach, be used by God, pastor, and lead, no. It was just an issue at this church at that time. Get that in our spirit. Amen? Now, what we have here, uh, Paul confronted them with their sin and their need for corrective action and clear commitment to Christ. Amen. Let's get into this powerful word here today. So we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Amen. And we're going to see all kind of division here. Oh, yeah. It's about to get wicked up in this church. Watch and see what happens. Get your popcorn, your little finger snack. Amen. Your little apple slices and your caramels. Yeah, get ready for this movie as it unveils in front of our eyes. See it with your spiritual eye and test yourself, your church. Do you see any of this going on in your church? What can you do to help get the sin out of God's church? Amen? How can you help? We're not saying leave. What can you do? to help get it back in line with the Word of God. If God placed you there, that might be why he put you there. Amen? If they don't want to correct, at least you know what to look for at a new place. Amen? So, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. This letter is from Paul. Have no doubt. (laughs) I heard you cry. And I'm going to respond to those cries. I got some answers. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And from our brother Sosthenes. 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 Amen. Who may have been Paul's secretary who wrote down this letter as Paul dictated it. It was probably, probably the Jewish synagogue leader in Corinth. Remember, we read about him. Didn't they beat that boy? <laughs> Try to arrest that boy for hiding Paul and them when they got there. Amen. Uh, Acts 18 and 17. You can uh, uh, review that if you need to. Yes, he had been beaten during an attack on Paul and then later became a believer. Sosthenes was well known to the members of the Corinthian church. And so Paul included his familiar name, in the opening of this letter. But look what Paul did. He had to reinstate his credentials. 
Y'all got all them false preachers and false teachers coming up in there, and y'all listening into that. It's leading the women astray. They're teaching false doctrines, and the women are jumping up in the church saying, well, I heard down at the marketplace from this really good preacher. <laughs> this, that, and the other. Sit them women down. Hush, hush. Have your husbands teach them. You see what I'm saying? Let's get into this. This is deep. But he's got to remind them who he is. Who is Paul? Chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. This isn't Paul's teaching. This is Christ's teaching. This isn't Paul's church. This is Jesus' church. Let's get this foundation laid again. Because <laughs> you're letting everybody come up in there and they just as corrupt and evil as they can be, and it's leading you all astray. He says in verse 2, I am writing to God's church in Corinth. Oh, let's set this record straight. People have said online, Rev. Eddie got a church. He doing a thing over here. Rev. Eddie ain't got nothing. <laughs> Are you with me? Jesus got a church. Rev. Eddie got the key. I'll make sure when it's time for church that the doors are open, the bathroom's clean, the chairs are set up, the sound system's ready to go. I am just his servant. This is his church. What did Paul say right here in verse 2? I am writing to God's church. Get this thing right. It's God's church in Corinth. To you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Sometimes you just got to put the foot down. Didn't grandma used to do that in the kitchen? Kids running around, acting a fool, screaming and hollering and yelling. And grandma got cornbread or a cake in the oven, and she don't want you to make it fall running around, shaking the floor, shaking the house, shaking the oven. Go outside and play. Leave me alone <laughs> my kitchen right well paul is telling them this is god's church what are y'all doing how y'all cutting up acting up dividing up creating divisiveness allowing evil to be amongst you leading you astray from what i taught you from the beginning it's God's church. It's not my church. It's not any other preacher's church. What did he tell them? Amen? He said, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth. To you who have been called by God. You are called, church, is what he's telling them, to be his own holy people. So you belong to God. And he's a holy God. And he wants you to live in holiness. I'm looking at these letters you wrote me, and they are breaking my heart. They are disturbing to hear the troubles that you're having. We, would, we didn't have these when I was there. What is truly going on down there? He made you holy. By means of Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, I have an asterisk there. In some translations of God's holy word, perhaps in your King James, it reads, or because you belong to Christ. He made you holy because you belong to Christ. This New Living Translation reads, He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus just as he did for all people. You're no different than the rest of these churches, yet you're all cutting up. 
The same thing he did for everyone else. He's done for you, but look where you've gotten. Oh, come on back. Amen. Just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. There's only one Lord. There's only one body of Christ. There's only one spirit, one baptism. You shouldn't be all this division and nutsy stuff going on. And then in verse 3, he says, May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Because what's going on in that church, they're going to need some grace because they're cutting up. <laughs> and they need peace because they've created catastrophe, chaos within that church. And we're about to find out why. Amen? They like this preacher. We're going to follow him. And somebody else in the church said, well, we take a stand. We're following him. And somebody else in the church said, well, we're going to follow this one. You're supposed to be following Christ. Paul's got to get this situation back under control. Let's see how the Lord uses him. Amen. In, uh, at the end of uh, at verse 4, it says, I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. So when Paul was working there, and you remember, he was there for quite a while. He saw their spiritual gifts flourishing. He saw and heard the speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues, the prophets and prophetesses speaking God's word, prophesying, hands-on healing. He saw the miracles. He saw the gifts. What y'all doing with these gifts? <laughs> now, oh, because you speak in tongues, you think you're better than everybody else? Uh-uh. Stop it. Stop comparing gifts. Oh, they got all kind of issues. Oh, you act like they ain't no issues in this church. <laughs> you about to answer these. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to go to the study guide on what we've got so far. Amen? Uh, let's see. Uh... Paul wrote this letter to the church in Corinth while he was visiting Ephesus during his third missionary journey. You'll check that out in Acts 19, uh, 1 through chapter 20 and 1. Amen. Corinth and Ephesus faced each other across the Aegean Sea. Paul knew the Corinthian church well because he had spent 18 months in Corinth told you he'd been there a while and they he laid that foundation and God was moving y'all and from where you were to where I'm hearing you are now this is this is not good amen so it says in the study guide here he had spent 18 months in Corinth during his second missionary journey uh and that would be Acts 18, 1 through 18. While in Ephesus, he had heard about problems in Corinth. About the same time, a delegation from the Corinthian church had visited Paul to ask his advice about their conflict. What you got conflicts for? Stop that. Stay in the spirit and out of the flesh, and you don't have this in Christ's church. Are you with me? It's through the power of the Holy Ghost that we live for Christ. Amen? He gives us the power to live a holy life. We stay surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Deny the flesh. Pray that the Holy Spirit will crucify the flesh so it can't rear up and do any harm in our personal walks and especially in the church. Are you with me? So, Paul's purpose for writing was to correct those problems, those problems in this particular church at this particular time. <laughs> Let's keep it in context. Amen? 
Paul's purpose of writing was to correct those problems and answer questions church members had asked in a previous letter. So 1st and 2nd Corinthians are answers to their letter. Are you with me? Paul was given a special calling from God to preach about Jesus Christ. Each Christian has a job to do, a role to take, or a contribution to make. And that doesn't mean money. It can be money. Amen. But time, effort, energy, planning, all of that can be our sacrifice for the Lord, a contribution. One assignment may seem more spectacular spectacular than another, but all are necessary to carry out God's greater plans for his church and for his world. Be available to God by placing your gifts at his service. Then as you discover what he calls you to do, be ready to do it. Let me give you an example. We're going to have an outreach this weekend at the church. Y'all ready? All right. We're going to have a pancake break. Mr. Anderson over there, he makes the best pancakes. And Miss Betty, oh, her sausage, my God, is off the chain. And she can whip them eggs together. Amen. There'll be hash browns provided by Ronnie. So we're going to do this thing. Y'all get out here, hand out these flyers. So see, somebody's going to be doing the flyers. Somebody's going to be doing the cooking. Somebody's going to greet them and bring them in, sit them down. Every position is important. Somebody's going to minister the word. Somebody's going to clean up the mess. Oh, you act like kids don't leave no mess. Yeah, they got mess. Everyone's job skills are needed in the work in Christ's church. And you might not feel like you have the gift of preaching or teaching. You might not have the gift of laying on hands, but you got the gift of prayer. Be that prayer warrior. Come on. Everyone's needed. And the whole body of Christ is gifted, skilled, and talented. And you've got spiritual gifts too. That's why we need God's Holy Spirit to reveal and bring out and encourage and strengthen all our gifts to pour out on everyone else that we may save souls. It's not about making the breakfast. That's something that the church does to provide for them. And as the hungry or those that want to come and check out this church, and take advantage of a free breakfast. Let's see what's going on over there, honey. I don't feel like cooking tomorrow anyway. I saw this flyer on the door. Let, let's go on over there and see what they got going on. They could be coming in for curiosity. They could be coming in because they're hurting. And this invitation, they're hoping it'll take them to an altar where they can be saved, healed, delivered, repaired and set free. If they're broken, they're in need of a repair, y'all. So it, it, the, the pancakes, it's just the device, a tool. But if they're good, <laughs> they'll never forget. And that was the day, they'll say. I had the best pancakes in my life and I found Christ. They took me to the cross. I'm saved. I've been reborn, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm on my way now. I'm in God's hands now. I'll never forget this day. But everyone has gifts that they can contribute into this cause. That's just an example. Amen? There's many causes where we need each other. Amen? For the building of God's kingdom. Let's see. Uh, I got another one. Study guy. Corinth, a giant cultural melting pot with, gr with a great diversity of wealth, religions, and moral standards, had a reputation for being fiercely independent and as uh, decadent as any city in the world. The Romans had destroyed Corinth in 146 B.C., after a rebellion. 
But in 46 B.C., the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar rebuilt it because of its strategic seaport. By Paul's day, A.D. 50, the Romans had made Corinth the capital of Achaia, present-day Greece. It was a large city, offering Rome great profits through trade as well as military protection of its ports. But the city's prosperity made it ripe for all sorts of corruption. Idolatry flourished, and there were more than a dozen pagan temples employing at least a thousand prostitutes. I do believe it would be safe to say prostitution was legal. All right, so watch this. Corinth's reputation was such that prostitutes in other cities began to be called Corinthian girls. Oh, wow. (laughs) Wow. Their reputation, y'all. Are you one of those Corinthian girls, huh? How much? You see what I'm saying? That's explosive, y'all. And that's where this church is planted. So now you see why they had the issues they had. Amen? So uh, let's see. Do I have any more here? Uh, Let's see. I got another one. This was probably not meant to be a private letter. Rather, it may have been circulated to other churches in nearby cities although it deals with specific issues facing the church at Corinth, all believers can learn from it. And guess what? We're going to learn from this. Something in 1 Corinthians we're going to glean to take into these last days. His last army, his bride that he's returning for on the cloud. Are you with me? Amen? The Corinthian church included a great, cross-section of believers, wealthy merchants, common laborers, former temple prostitutes, and middle-class families. Because of the wide diversity of people and backgrounds, Paul takes great pains to stress the need for both spiritual unity and Christ-like character. You say you love the Lord. You say you're a child of God. How come you don't act like him? <laughs> Are you with me? Because, Bubba, I don't see no Jesus in you. Are you with me? Ah, there he goes. Sit that. Bubba, somebody take that gun from Bubba. Ain't nobody calling you. We in Bible study. Open up that Bible and act like you got some sense. Are you with me? You say you belong that you're a child of God. Well, if your father is God, where are the characteristics of your father in your walk, in your life? How much of him is in you? We can see earthly fathers standing next to their children and say, Barney, (laughs) you spit that boy out. He looked just like you. He just a little you. (laughs) It can be from looks. It can be from characteristics. We want to have God's characteristics as part of our character. And the Holy Ghost will do that if we but surrender. That's all it takes. Amen? Let's keep reading. Back in this scripture, we're in verse 5. Through him, talking about Jesus Christ, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. These are some smart people. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now, you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. Now, that 
They didn't see him coming on the clouds. They were prepared for the Lord to return on the clouds. We are going to see him return on the clouds. So let's read this again. Verse 8. He. Who's he? God himself. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end. The end of what? The end of your life when you drop that body or the end of human history as we know it when we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ come on the cloud. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free of all blame. And we are blameless under the blood of Jesus. Amen? He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. And trust me, we do not know what day that's going to be, nor do we need to waste time looking for it, knowing it's close, knowing that we are in the last days, about to go into the tribulation. Our hearts should be set on saving souls. Let's go tell somebody about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go tell somebody there's a cross. Oh, you act like there ain't no cross. There's a cross I can take you to. I've been there. He removed every one of my sins. It felt like the weight of a planet off of my shoulders as I felt his love, his freedom, his forgiveness, and now I live for him. Glory! I'm spirit-filled now, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I want to share it with you. I want to share it with you. He'll fill you too. Let me take you to the cross and get you under that fountain of blood. That's what should be on our hearts right now in these last days. Amen? Watch this. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is powerful, y'all. Amen. Let's see. I got a study guide on that. The Corinthian church members had all the spiritual gifts they needed to live the Christian life, to witness for Christ and to stand against the paganism and immorality of Corinth. But instead of using what God had given them, they were arguing over which gifts were more important. We'll be getting into that argument in chapters 12 through 14 as we continue in this book of 1 Corinthians. Amen? Before tackling the problems, Paul described his hope for the Corinthians. He guaranteed these believers that God would consider them free from all blame when Christ returned. This guarantee was not because of their great gifts or their shining performance, but because of what Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ accomplished for them through his death and resurrection, the cross. I'm telling you, you can't preach this true gospel of Jesus Christ without getting back to the cross and under the blood. I don't know if you're truly a ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if you don't have the message of the cross. Are you with me? It's what Christ did that makes us blameless. Not the gifts we have, not the work we do, not how pretty we preach, but for what Christ did. And you can't earn that. We got that out of Romans. Remember? Can't earn that. Can't even earn a blessing. <laughs> can't even earn favor. You can't earn nothing from God. God blesses because that's what he does. <laughs> Amen? 
not because we deserve it, but because it's who he is. He pours out his love, holding nothing back onto each and every one of us, not because we deserve it, because we've come to the cross. He loves those that are going to burn in hell for forever with that same love he has for us. Because God is love, it's who he is. All we do is just fall into his arms and say, use me, Lord. I surrender. I give up. Have your way in my life. If you see anything in me that don't belong, I give you my permission. Take it away. I don't want it either. I surrender. Have your way in my life. Show me how to do this thing called life. What is it that you created me for? Make it come to pass. I give up. I ain't getting in your way no more, Lord. Do what you're going to (laughs) do. That's all it takes on our part is that surrender. Amen? So let's see. All who believe in the Lord Jesus will be considered blameless when Jesus Christ returns. Today's struggles, oh, y'all act like we ain't got no struggles. Today's struggles, difficulties, and failures don't tell the whole story. Keep the big picture in mind. If you have faith in Christ, even if it is weak, you are and will be saved. It's by faith faith that we receive this free gift of salvation. Amen? So, watch this. Uh, I got, I can't give you the next one. Let's get back into this scripture. Amen? Verse 10, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. In other words, you've got to be one. One with Christ. One body, his body. You have to be one with his Holy Spirit. you got to be one with his word. That oneness, one with each other. If dream is limping, I'm going to grab, put a shoulder up under her other arms. You ain't got to carry this weight. You ain't got a limp. I got you. Come on. We're going to get through this together. We're bound together in love, bound together by his spirit, strengthening and encouraging and loving on one another, iron sharpening iron. She got things and gifts I'll never have. Share them. They're not for you. They're for the body of Christ. But we're looking at a church here he's addressing. They're not in harmony with one another. They're not walking together in God's spirit. One over here doing this, one over there doing that. Miss Sally in the back acting a fool. Are you with me? Let's reread that. I appeal to you. Dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other, let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. So where should our minds be? Not on the garage sale. Not not on them freaky little prostitutes that's running down the street. All our minds need to be on Jesus. Are you with me? Amen? Rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Verse 11, for some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels. Because now you know where it came from. He snitched them out. Chloe, in your household, you told on us. <laughs> yeah, because y'all acting the fool. You ain't in the spirit of God. Y'all tripping without luggage. And somebody need to tell, because this ain't church. This don't feel good. And we are grieving God's Holy Spirit. This must come to an end. 
Thank God, Chloe told. <laughs> Amen. Let's reread that. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos. Or, I follow Peter. Or, I follow only Christ. Now you see it. Look at the division. Well, I don't like Paul. You know, Paul used to kill up some folks. I was going to invite him over for a barbecue, but he'd have pulled out a knife and kill up everybody in the place. I'd rather have Peter. Peter ran with Jesus. I like Peter. He's such a kind man. I'm going to follow Peter. Forget Paul. But it was Paul that planted the church. Oh, I don't care about that. I just don't trust the boy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There's division. Are you with me? Division. <clears throat> and it's creating major issues in this church. Watch this now. I'm going to reread that again and not clown with it. Verse 12. Some of you are saying, I'm a follower of Paul. What did Jesus say? Follow me. Now we need pastors and leaders in God's church today that are following Jesus. Are you with me? If the leader's following Jesus, then the congregation who's behind that pastor are following Jesus as well. That's why I keep telling y'all, the pastor's not over this church. He's as much a part of the body because it's Christ that's over the church. The pastor is the servant for the church, and he'll usher everyone. Okay, single file, line it up. Kids love that. See the master, that be Jesus. Follow him. Stay in line. Okay, keep up, little Barney. Keep up, little Mary. Yeah, tighten up that line. Come on, come on. Oh, you forgot your backpack, Martha. Here, let me give it to you. Come on, get in line. Go, go, go. We're following Jesus, not a human being. Come on, let's get this thing right. He says, in verse 12, some of you are saying I'm a follower of Paul. Others are saying I follow Apollos or I follow Peter or I follow Christ. Now, some of your Bibles for Peter may say Cephas, the Hebrew name. Amen. You might see that in your King James. Amen. And so, or I only follow Christ. Uh, let's see. Some of you are saying, I'm a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Verse 13. Has Christ been divided into factions? See, that's ridiculous. The church is his body, and there's only one body in Christ. Now, we might be on Main Street. Y'all might be on Elm Street. Y'all over there by Palm and Fifth. Y'all over there in another country. Y'all over there in another part of the world. It's still one body. Christ's body. <laughs> and he is the head of his church. That means pastors can come together. Why do you think we've had so many interviews on these podcasts over the last year and a half with other ministries, with other pastors, with other church leaders? We're supposed to be one. We're all fighting for the same thing, supposedly souls. But I've been hit up. Y'all working in our neighborhood. Your neighborhood. Yeah. My church is closer to this neighborhood than yours. What y'all doing down there? Feeding the hungry. What, what, 
Are you working over here? We didn't know. Well, no, we're not. We're not feeding the hungry. We we don't want them nasty people in our church. But what are you doing over here? You in our neighborhood. That I've seen that, Joe. That's sick. That's sick. But one of the biggest churches in L.A., right there on Chris, uh, on Crenshaw Boulevard. They're the first to tell you you can't minister in their neighborhood, but yet there's homeless across the street from that cathedral. Heller, I'd be ashamed to be a pastor of a church and there's homeless sleeping across the street in the doorways of the businesses. I would be ashamed. How are you going to drive in to your church and not see the homeless out there? I wouldn't want any homeless for miles around Christ's church. Because that means somebody don't care about the least of his. Oh, no, y'all come up. Hey, <laughs> come over here on the lot. I know the church is closed, but I'm ordering up some trucks. And there's going to be showers. We're going to provide new clothes. Matter of fact, I'm going to buy some RVs and put them way back in the parking lot. Y'all don't sleep outside no more. We got something for you here. I mean, if you're that big of a mega church, then you got some loot. If you can buy private jets and mansions, then you can clean up those streets. And if every church had the streets cleaned up around it, shoot, in L.A., there's a church every block. There wouldn't be no homeless, would there? Where's the work? But then you get upset at other churches for coming in. They they crossed an imaginary line in your mind, came into your territory. I didn't know the streets belonged to anybody except the city. <laughs> They're fussing and fighting over nothing, y'all. And that's a good question. Has Christ been divided into Factions. Of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Oh, now he went knee deep up in it, y'all. Oh, y'all act like he didn't go knee deep. <laughs> you talking about who you going to follow? Did I die for you, fool? <laughs> it's essentially ad-libbed what he's saying. Amen? He said, Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not! <laughs> he said, Y'all like the ridiculous. I didn't yell for nothing. I got an exclamation mark in my Bible. That was verse 13. Verse 14. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, for now no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh, yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Verse 17, for Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. I ain't coming up here with no cleverness. I preach this gospel and y'all got saved. Now y'all acting a fool. Questioning whether or not you're really saved. Did the power of the cross really enter your lives? How can you split up this church of Christ? Talking about you're following this man or you're following that man or you're following this man. None of them men died for you. You're supposed to be following Christ. Let's go to this study guide. We're probably going to end this right here today. Amen. So we got through 17 verses. Amen. Let's see what we've got in this study guide here. Amen. Uh, Paul founded the church in Corinth on his second missionary journey. 18 months after he left, arguments and division arose and some church members slipped back into an immoral lifestyle. Paul wrote this letter to address the problems 
and to clear up confusion about right and wrong so they they would remove the immorality from among them. The Corinthian people had a reputation. A reputation, y'all, for jumping from fad to fad. Paul wanted to keep Christianity from de degenerating into just another fad. Amen? Like a frustrated coach watching his team bicker on the court call Paul called for a timeout <laughs> blew the whistle on him get your sorry butts over to this bench what are you doing out here we got an audience an opposing team and y'all out here clowning on the court I can see coach Gecker or coach low now <laughs> busting clipboards on helmets, head, putting folks on the bench. Sit yourself down on that bench. Come on, Sam Knight. We're going to get you in here. Put me in, coach. <laughs> right? This one won't play. The starters are cutting up. Come on. Let's get second string in there, see if y'all can do any better. Watch this. He saw the danger of divisions and arguments. The Corinthian believers' lack of unity was obvious. They may have been playing in the same uniform, but they were doing as much as the opposition to bring about their own defeat. The problems weren't so much differences of opinion as divided Allegiances. We can change that word to loyalties. You're following teachers, preachers, instead of Christ. And these were all powerful men of God. Apollos wasn't no joke. Peter wasn't no joke. Paul wasn't no joke. But Jesus is the reason. Are you with me? And now you've disrupted the unity, the harmony, the love, the compassion, all the gifts of the church by, what is this? You're not following Apollos. You're going to follow Peter, so you're not coming to this function or giving of your gifts. Or, what is this nonsense? Division in the church. Are you with me? Watch this. They were arguing over which position on the team was most important in a way that made them ineffective as a unit. They were on the field but out of the game. Divisions between Christians worked like brick walls and barbed wire fences to undermine the effectiveness of the message that the believers are to proclaim. Focus on your coach, Jesus Christ, and the purpose he has for you. Strive for harmony. Keep argument about allegiances off the team. Amen? I got a couple more here, and we'll wrap it up. Study God. In this large and diverse Corinthian church, the believers favored different preachers because there was as yet no written New Testament. The believers depended heavily on preaching and teaching for spiritual insight into the meaning of the Old Testament. Some followed Paul, who had founded their church. Some, who had heard Peter in Jerusalem, followed him. Others listened only to Apollos, an eloquent and popular preacher who had been a, a dynamic ministry in Corinth. Although these three preachers were united in their message, their personalities attracted different people. At this time, the church was in danger of dividing. By mentioning Jesus Christ ten times in the first ten verses, Paul makes it clear who it is 
all preachers and teachers should emphasize. God's message is much more important than any human messenger. Are you with me? We stick to this word, y'all. That's how we get through this tribulation. That's how we get through these end days. We all keep our eye on Christ. And we use our gifts to edify the body of Christ and to give glory to God. It's got to be about him, y'all. Don't you know we're all lost without Jesus? Are you with me? Amen? When Paul said that Christ didn't send him to baptize, he wasn't minimizing the importance of baptism. Baptism was commanded by Jesus himself. You'll find that in Matthew 28, 19. And practiced by the early church. You'll see that in Acts 2 and 41. Paul was emphasizing that no one person should do everything. Paul's gift was preaching, and that's what he did. Christian ministry should be a team effort. No preacher or teacher is a complete link between God and the people, and no individual can do all that the apostles did. We must be content to operate within the gifts God has given us and to carry out his plan wholeheartedly. And we've ran into that, y'all. Amen? I know my gifts, skills, and talents, and spiritual gifts. Amen? I testify that hell is real. So I might not be in church on Sunday, because I may be at another church giving my testimony. That means there needs to be other pastors and preachers and teachers ready to go in this church. Because if the Lord has need for me, y'all, I'm gone. <laughs> Are you with me? So we may be working with other ministries and they got something going, but if you don't need me to preach, teach, or testify, you don't need me. But I got a plate full of things I need to do for the Lord every day. Every day. So if you're having a pancake breakfast and you want me to attend and make pancakes, and that's it, you don't need me. Because every day in this ministry, we have a podcast to do. We've got a prayer line people are calling on all day and all night. We're reaching all around this world ministering to God's loveliest. Y'all. <laughs> so why would you want me to go make pancakes? And then why would you cuss me out? Because I ain't coming. I know my lane. Are you with me? And now they don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> they don't understand the body of Christ. They're babies. They're not in the spirit. They're in the flesh. So they think they can threaten you and cuss you out and diminish who you are, diminish Christ in you because you don't do their bidding. This stuff's got to get out, y'all. We're one body the body of Christ, with Christ in charge, and we all have gifts, skills, and talents to do and build up this body and to bring God the glory. But you see where flesh comes in? Do you see the flesh here? They're not in the Spirit of God. It shouldn't matter who's preaching this Sunday. Receive that word because the word they're given comes from God himself. But to create division in a church, and this was a large church, y'all. You see how it rips through. And people see this. And they're young in their walk, perhaps. And they see this and they're like, ew, 
Y'all ugly. Y'all nasty. I don't think I want to come back to this church no more. And don't they have sex going on at the, one of those temples out there with the Corinthian prostitutes I've heard so much? Maybe I'll go out there. Look how they diminish the power of the cross when you bring this type of flesh into the body of Christ. He said, and we read this earlier in its word, it said that uh, this was in verse 10. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Are you with me? And how you do that <laughs> is stand in the spirit because you can't accomplish one of those things in the flesh. Flesh must die, y'all. Are you with me? That, that way there will be harmony with each other. There'll be harmony in the church, working together in the church not working against each other. Well, I don't like the way she puts the uh, tablecloths on. Well, go help her. What you fussing about? Go help her. And can't nobody make a centerpiece better than Sally. Ask her to help. Make them tables look good for the invited guests, the community you have coming in as you're looking for the lost, that they too may be saved. What is the purpose of the ministry? To make the best pancake better than <laughs> IHOP? Or to get souls for God's kingdom? In the flesh, you'll lose sight of what the main purpose is. It's to get them in here and to preach this true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if the bait on the hook is a pancake, oh, by God, use that hook good. But sink it, and let's get souls for the kingdom. That's what it's all about. Are you with me? If you're not preaching or teaching for souls, what are you doing in that pulpit? Get out. It's a dangerous place to play. Amen? So uh, I got one more. Some speakers use impressive words, but they are weak on content. Paul stressed solid content and practical help for his listeners. He wanted them to be impressed with his message, not just his style. You don't need to be a great speaker with a large vocabulary to share the good news effectively. The persuasive power is in the story, not the storyteller. Paul was not against those who carefully prepare what they say, but against those who try to impress others with their knowledge or speaking ability. And we see that a lot in today's churches. They want to get up there and show off using all these big words. You got to look up in a dictionary, but they're doing it from the pulpit. Do we have a dictionary in the pews? Why are you talking over people's heads? What you're really doing, you're filled with pride, and you want people to look at you. Oh, what a brilliant and outstanding speaker he is. Why are you trying to get people to focus on you as a teacher, a preacher? This must be focused on Jesus. Know your audience and bring the true gospel of Jesus Christ. If you'll just preach this gospel, it's written for us. It wasn't written for those in Corinth at this time in human history. We have a New Testament now. They got all that we're we, we see in the New Testament from the Old Testament and built on the Old Testament. That's what they were preaching. Now, you're going to try to show off in the pulpit and talk above everybody's head. Who got anything? What did they leave with? 
My motto is you can't come in to God's church and leave the same. <laughs> Where's room for the Holy Ghost? Why are you all up in the way? Walking around, got a mic in your hand, <laughs> doing this walk that 50 other thousand people on YouTube walk with your head down on the floor as if that means something. As if that's supposed to draw someone. That's supposed to touch someone's heart. The way you walk, your style is not needed. What's needed is this word because the power's in the word. Preach the word. Teach the word. It ain't about what you're dressed as. It ain't about that ball cap on your head and maybe even backwards. It's not about the print on your T-shirt. It's not about how white your tennis shoes are. It's not about you walking, looking at the floor, back and forth across the stage as if this is the new style of church. Bring the word. Teach the word. Live the word. So they have a walking example of you. You won't be looking down anymore. You can look them in the eyes. You can walk down into the pews and lay hands on folks and there'll be power, Holy Ghost power to heal them as you're preaching. Let the Lord use you and stop trying to become something that's YouTube friendly. Are you with me, y'all? The same issues they're having, I've seen today. I've been seeing it for 19 years because I'm visiting a lot of churches, giving my testimony. And generally, I got to go through a part of the service before they hand me the mic and I see what's going on. And I feel what's there. And what I'm looking for is the anointing. What I'm looking for is the Spirit of God up in that place. Are you with me? A lot of times I see a lot of religion. I see a lot of just repetition of what we did last week. We do this every week. Come on. People's situations change from week to week. That service shouldn't be the same this week as it was last week. Not if the Holy Ghost is in charge, because you don't know what kind of week God's people have had. You might always start your service off with music. Yeah, drive them demons out. Praise God. But there can't be an order of service. <laughs> okay. We read the bulletin, and now it's time for our announcement. Now it's time for our offering. Now it's time for our reading of the word. When's it going to be time for that woman in the third row that just lost three kids to gun violence in the streets is sitting there with a broken heart? Her husband left her to raise those three kids, and now she's got nobody. How come nobody's listening to the Holy Spirit while you sitting up here reading the bulletin of what's going to happen next? What needs to happen next is that the elders of the church grab that woman and hold her and hug her, bring her up to the pulpit. The pastor embrace her. The women of the church come and surround her. Should nobody be in their seat? Oh, but that's not on the bulletin. Let the Spirit be our guide. Let God's Spirit be on our on. Let God's Spirit run the church service, and you'll never see two Sundays alike. <laughs> Are you with me? I don't even know what I'm gonna preach till the Spirit moves, and He don't always tell me before we get in that church. I don't know what he's going to do today. The fact that we've all come 
and we're going to praise him. We're going to worship him. We're going to glorify him. Amen. How long and when and all that, I don't know. Are you with me? It's got to be God's way, not ours. We got to get out of the way, and in us, flesh needs to die. That way, we can stand still with God's Holy Spirit. I pray this was a blessing to you. We'll be starting tomorrow in verse 18 in 1 Corinthians. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful, 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 life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word that you have blessed us with today. Bury it in our hearts, Father, with like barbed wire that it will remain in our hearts throughout eternity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Some of you, some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much, and you drew them here with purpose. <laughs> they got an illness, a sickness, a condition, maybe more than one, maybe more than two, maybe more than three going on in their bodies. They need your mighty, mighty hand of healing on their body. And we're going to pray for it right now. We declare it right now. If that's you, if the doctor has told you you got this, and it's generally a real long, unpronounceable name, they love that. Okay? There's no name above the name of Jesus. I don't care what they call it. And maybe it's a condition. They tell you there's no cure. It's a disease that all they can do is pacify you with this pill or that pill. Maybe it's a more than one thing in your body. We declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, whole and complete in every area of your bodies right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, Father, that you've drawn here today and you love and adore them so much, you brought them here with purpose. <laughs> and I know what you're going to do, Lord. Amen. They're in bondage. They got a yoke, a stronghold. They're chained up by the enemy. They may be addicted to this drug or that drug or this drug or that drug. And it might be a drug. It ain't even their volition. They didn't, they didn't even want to get addicted to nothing. That doctors did this to treat something else. Some are in bondage to alcohol, Lord, pornography, gambling. This is all kind of stuff, but you know each and every one of them, and you know exactly what that bondage in, what that bondage is. It's no concern of ours. We want what you want. We want them free, and we declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every yoke broken in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Every stronghold torn down right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Every chain ripped off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And you are now free. <laughs> and those who Jesus have set free are free indeed. No withdrawals. No monkey on your back and no regret. Freedom in Christ, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Now you're free to obey this word, free to serve him, free to love him with nothing holding you back. Thank you, Jesus. Some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much that you've drawn here with purpose. <laughs> Prisoners, Lord, not behind walls, not in the county jails or the institution prisons, but prisoners in their emotions, their hearts, their spirits, their minds. They've been told they got PTSD and 
all kind of stuff. Depression, anxiety. But you said in your word, it's the anointing. It's the anointing that opens up those prison doors and sets each and every captive free. I know your will, Lord, and we're going to declare it right now. If they told you you got this, that, and the other, and multiple things, uh uh-uh. That's not God's will for your life. And we speak it in the mighty name of Jesus, PT, PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Bipolar gone in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone right now in Jesus' name. And if there's any other names, and I'm sure there is, I just don't know them. And maybe they told you you got more than one. (laughs) All of that gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. You are now free. Free in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And some of these, Lord Jesus, that you love and adore so much and you drew here today with purpose in a dark place. And they went in on purpose and they don't want to come out. They don't want to come out, Lord. And you know why they're there. You know each and every one of them personally. And you know where that dark place is located. Oh, Lord, you can do something to darkness. You're the light of the world. Darkness can't exist in your light. Not even a shadow. You're the glory of God, that bright morning star. Enter into each and every one of their dark places and light it up with you. Thank you, Jesus. Lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them to their feet into your strong and mighty and loving and caring and protecting and miracle-working arms. Just hug them and hold them and squeeze them. Hold them close. Let them know I got you, child. Walk them out of that place into a new life, lit up by you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Did we have a good time today, y'all? We'll be back tomorrow. Until we do, can you do us a teeny weeny favor? Have a nice day, a good day, a wonderful day, a magnificent day, a glorious day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. We'll see you tomorrow.